Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Siege Cubed Community Tournament. This is the start of the playoffs. This will be the end to the first season of Siege Cubed, and we are so excited to bring you Honey Badgers versus Banana Dance. This will be the match that decides which team will go up against the Squiggly Boys for the cash prize. And I am not casting alone today. I am joined by my friend, Bemi. What's good, everybody? I'm back in the zone, ready to do some more Overwatch. How you doing, Spark? It's the playoffs! Dude, I am so excited. These teams have proven that they are really ready to take these fights, and they are, they, they, they've already gotten to the, to the last stretch. These are the top three teams that we're going to be seeing today. These are the ones that really know they want to be here. They're the ones that are going to try their hardest, and we're definitely in for a show. I don't know what exactly that show is going to be, but it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to have something to do with badgers and potassium. So obviously these people are going to be ready to handle some animals and be able to have good muscle fiber. But that's not the case. We are going to start in Lijiang Tower. And obviously speaking of bananas, we might see a dive starting out here. Why don't you talk about what kind of compositions we should expect and what their goals are? Well, I know for a fact that Honey Badgers has not always been going with the sort of vanilla team compositions you like to expect. Uh, I, I play with some of the players on Honey Badgers, especially this lineup right here. I play with two of them very regularly, and uh, there's a specific type of team composition that they might be willing to pull out here just to surprise Banana Dance, and that would be something I like to call the unblockable comp. You know, you take a uh, Genji and a Doomfist and a Winston and a Reinhardt, and it's just so much damage that can't be blocked by barriers or defense matrix, and it can be really, really good for deleting a front line. Sometimes I also like to throw in an Ana, an extra bit of CC pressure, keep the shields up, even though it's not blocking anything but key abilities. And if they end up running something like that, it could really be interesting to watch. But more likely, especially from Banana Dance, and you can see them locking it in now, is the Pharmacy. We are almost definitely going to see that played almost the entire match because we don't seem to have any hit scans coming out from the Honey Badgers. So the Fuzz, so Fuzz God on the Pharmacy on Banana Dance is definitely one to watch. But Pierce is going to make the last minute swap under the Widow, so that's a duel in general to keep your eye on. A duel in general. The environmental kill could come into play very, very soon, but they do manage to get out of the way. Fuzz God is not going to be able to get that kill. Mirabrite is going down very, very quickly. Take a lot of damage, but Tommy's going to be going down with the res is forced out. But Fuzz God's going to keep that initial pressure. Punishing Sal for the res. I have not seen that before, and that is already going to be the point right then and there. The team fight is won. They understand that their main support gone is not going to be a winnable fight. Yeah, it was very, very unlucky for Sal. The, uh, Axel knew exactly what was happening. They knew the res was going to be trying to come out to save Tommy uh, retroactively. Axel was very proactive about it and, and prevented that from really happening to the extent that the Honey Badgers wanted. So it looks like the Honey Badgers are still trying to push their way over the bridge, but they have to be really careful. Fuzz got on the pharmacy is going to make it really difficult for them to take space here. They're already considering going back the other way. You can see it in their movement. Looks like they're going to go directly to the point here. Yeah, going main is probably a good idea, especially when you have that Winston. Wesley could drop the bubble and be able to try to protect their team. They're doing the best they can right now. They are getting a little bit overwhelmed, but the sound barrier, even though they're far apart, is going to get quite a couple of members and keep them alive, but that is going to be Sal by themselves, and there's the D-Mech coming in right now. Marble is Diva Mechless, so that is very unfortunate, but there's the Barras coming in, and Fuzz Guys could be able to wipe out Sal. The only kill they find, but that is still a crucial kill, but it seems like team has already taken out quite a few members already and with the lucio radiant healing going on they are able to overwhelm the tracer the tracer is not going to be able to overwhelm or be able to flank quite properly yet because due to the fact that they are just barely living cologne comes in tommy drops the dragon blade they do find one kill and there's the pulse bomb pierce is able to keep it through they have dropped a lot of ults just to try to turn this point around not even to build percentage and that is a big thing to say cologne finds tommy oh my god may may not be able to win this fight they are going back and forth pulse bomb coming back around lucy almost gets eaten by it there is the diva bomb being bubbled back up trying their best to come back to it now there is Mill kill that's just almost gonna live on a prayer. They did manage to get a little bit of the sound barrier going on. That looks fine. The radiant healing coming in from Quesadilla is gonna be great. A delicious sandwich from the Hispanic culture that's doing good. And Hippo Mage is gonna be able to get that DMEC though. That might be able to turn the tide, but there is the trade off. But Axel with the Tesla cannon is gonna be able to finally turn this around. And we might finally saw some lines of who's gonna win this fight. And it looks like it's gonna be on the side of Banana Dance. They managed to be able to hold this so well, but they've been dropping alts very, very quickly. There has been so much back and forth. They're already reaching at 99.99%. They have been going back and forth. One all at a time. Fuzz God drops 
that barrage doesn't find any kills, but at least found one hippo mage earlier before they dropped it. So nicely done there. They find Wesley. Primal Rage coming in for Axel. Finds Pierce. Nicely done. Swings him out of the way. Wesley's gonna get the rest. But that is going to be all there is. That is not going to help him all out unless there's a great Dragon Blade from Tommy. But Tommy's trying to have find a good opening. Maybe at least team next mill kill. But there is the Viva Bomb coming out very, very soon. But things have been going so fast they may not even know if they have it or not. They're doing the best they can right now. This is a back and forth fight that I've never seen before. This is a great first fight. Milkill is going to be able to get z mech on Marble. If they can stagger it for a little bit longer, they can do the best they can. Cologne's going to follow up on that. Fuzz God's doing great. Wesley gets punched down. And there's the boot for Quesadilla. That actually might be it. They finally have Tommy left. Tommy will go down very soon. Once again, another boop, and that's it. That was absolutely the longest fight I have ever seen in my entire Overwatch career. And you know what, despite the fact that it went 99-0, to zero, if nothing else, this just proves how evenly matched these teams are. Were it not for that early on pick onto Tommy that forced a secondary pick onto Sal, that let Banana Dance cap the point at first, you can tell that in the in the mid fight, in, in, when these teams are really duking it out, when it comes down to their mechanics and their target focus, these teams are really evenly matched. It really could come down to who caps the point first over and over again because it looks like they're just hitting their heads against walls every time they go up to fight each other. They just trade back and forth and none of them can seem to land any ultimates that are high enough value to outpace the value of the opponent ultimates. Anyways, here on Control Center, we're probably going to see some, some more Death Ball style team compositions with Lucio, Reinhardt, uh, and it looks like we're also going to have a McCree Junkrat from the Honey Badgers, which is really interesting. I really want to see Pierce's influence from the McCree. Looks like he's going to immediately find Quesadilla as soon as he takes this sightline, and there is nothing on the side of an internet to actually shut him down at this range. It was a really smart pick from the Honey Badgers. Now that they don't have case of the up, they're going to start moving in. Yeah, they are moving in as quick as they can. Wesley is, however, getting taken down very, very quickly, and they need to get that res on. They are going to go down, ultimately. Pierce finds Fuzz God, though, so uh, unfortunately, they don't even need the Junkrat to even push through since they took out the main tank right away, but Pierce is working overtime. I guess they were trying to read into maybe a flanky DPS, but they just got Pierce just popping off with the flashbang. The high noon's already ready. They're trying to get Axel down, but they're only going to just be able to break the shield, understandably. So, there's so much damage going on. Marvel's able to get Axel. Great stuff with the bubbles. Yeah, we got to watch Cologne here. He's got the grab. He could easily yeah. move in and just finish the fight off immediately. You're absolutely He's go right. For it. He only gets the one, though. There's Marvel only there. They're trying their best. Fuzz guy does be able to take out Marble ultimately, so that's going to be a good pick. There's the Earth Shatter, a huge shatter, taking out Cologne and Milkill. But Wesley's going to go down ultimately, actually, and not Cologne. A very interesting turn of events, and there is already, once again, them taking the fight to spawn because they don't want this 99 versus 99 makeshift kind of hold. And yet you can see again, it's sort of exactly like I said, these teams are so evenly matched in the mid fight, no one seems to be able to find enough value to really shut down the push effectively. Looks like that P-Drop's gonna stall the tire out, but it might do something. Ooh. Pierce manages to take it out. Even though the self-destruct gets Hippo Mage, it could still go either way. Unfortunately, Wesley's charge is a little misplaced and it might finally go to the way of the, of the, of the, of the Banana Dance here as the Honey Badgers are forced to back out and reassess their strategy. Pierce might be swapping heroes right now, we're gonna see. Uh, Hippomage is going to go onto the Ana, see if she can land a nice uh, bio nade to shut down the healing sources from the Nana Dance. Now we have another Riptire coming out, this time from the Honey Badgers, but Fuzz God knows where it's coming from. It might get somebody, it's going around for the back line. It's going to take out Cologne, and Axel is also down to the pressure from Pierce on the front. Now there's no front line from the Banana Dance, so Honey Badger's going to search forward and see what happens. Pierce did also get that pick off of Axel, so that's going to be great. Switching over to the Reaper, I was a little bit worried, but it seems to be the target prioritization is working out quite well and effectively. Fuzz got almost going to go down, and that is going to be it. They Pierce gets Mirror Bright, and they managed to turn around this point effectively to their stand. But 99% from Banana Dance, that's a lot better than what we saw from last map, even though it was a very good map overall last map. Absolutely. So now that they have the point, they have to be really careful not to lose their ultimate advantage, which is already incredibly, incredibly slight. Now with the use of grab, they completely lose it. They need to get something. The shatter is massive with the follow-up from the grab. Can they get Wesley out? That's going to be the real decider of this fight. And unfortunately, he's going to fall. So they have to survive this retire. If they don't, the point immediately flips right back into the favor of Banana Dance. And unfortunately, it looks like that's going to happen. 
Yeah, a lo sound barrier plus a rip tire coming at you. It's just high health enemies with also a high damage tire that's moving at you at 100 miles per hour. Going to be dangerous. Also, that grab is going to be great. But that death blossom from Pierce is going to come in, but it's only going to get fuzz. That's the wick going down, and we are going to see a 2-0. Unfortunately, just getting Fuzz God isn't enough. He needed to get all three. If he could have done that, maybe there's a chance he could have turned it all by himself. But it was a slim chance to begin with, so I think he should be proud of himself just for taking out the real damage dealer from the team in the first place. Anyways, we're going to now move on to Night Market. This could be game point for Banana Dance. If they manage to take this home, the first map will go in favor of Banana Dance, and Honey Badgers will have a bit of an oh, uphill climb. Oh, it's the best climb. of five. That's right. I and it is the best of five. I apologize for my ignorance. We're going the old school route of this <laughs> control point map, and you know what? That's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure Banana Dance or either team wouldn't complain that much here at match point right now or, or i would say the honey badgers for sure we might be expecting to die but i also like tommy going on this may but never mind they are going to switch on over to the tracer a flanking dps or a zoning dps either way works out but we'll see how both work out here it looks like we're going to see death ball working out pretty much in the long run as long as they can get through that shield and bubbles coming in from the zarya and reinhardt they could do fine they got to be careful with hippo mage as well they could Biotic Grenade, a lot of them, they're doing the best they can. They're going right to the point, falling back. But Marble's going to get Axel, but the trade is still working out. Reinhardt's are down, so it's a matter of getting crucial kills with DPS. Buzz God and Tommy are going to be asked a lot, especially Pierce as well. Pierce does find Quesadilla. That's going to be great, and that's going to be actually the rest of the fight right there. Mill kill is going to be D-Max, but that's pretty much a kill right there technically in itself because it's so hard to get a lot of ult charge back up to remecking is very risky pierce does find the storm arrow kill and that is a great pen coming in from axel but it's not going to find much more after that wesley mana boost is going to be pretty much a uh, uh sight to behold pretty much you know these fights are lasting such a long time and i think it might have something to do with how the dps are playing around their tanks or more particularly the way the tanks are trying to make space for dps i'm not sure it quite lines up with the goals of the DPS. So for instance, you might see Wesley moving forward to take some more aggressive space when really what his DPS need is just to stay right where they are and take shots from range. Just sort of as an example of what I've seen so far. Now at this point, the grab is gonna get used. We'll see if there's any follow-up on that. There's a massive nade coming in from Hippo Mage, which actually manages to take, keep his frontline up long enough for it to become a 3v3. Hippo Mage might follow the That's an amazing sleep on the, on the mirror, right? It completely stops the coalescence, but not before Hippo Mage falls. At this point, it's only a 1v2. This is actually winnable for Tommy if he wants to make a play here. It's down to the 1v1. Oh, he gets Fuzz God. It's now just him and Cologne. Wesley's back to touch Aww. point. He could stall long enough for his team to get here. One nice pin could be enough. The bubble's there, but he is going to fall. If someone can touch point, they could flip it fairly fast. It looks like, no, they might just want to back out and wait for Wesley to get back. Now, they yeah. do have a slight ultimate advantage. They're going to use their... Graviton immediately, but the Shatter's there to prevent any follow-up. The supports are down for the Honey Badgers, and Marble has to go a long way home thanks to a well-placed set of dragons. Wesley, you might not want to be moving forward right now, buddy. Yeah, they're doing the best they can. They gotta fall back, and I understand they're regrouping as well. They're pushing on through. Oh my gosh! That is such a damage-dealing pressure. Milkill also <laughs> getting the Roadhog is going to be great. They take out Wesley. There's the Sleep Dart coming in. That sort of puts Axel in an awkward corner. They, if they could have utilized upon that, they might have been able to work out. But right now, they're just trying to deal as much damage as they can and as much range and much mobility as they can as well. They're doing the best they are can. They're putting the best foot forward. Any synonyms you want to say for doing their so best? So right now, There's a Wesley really needs to land a shatter here because if he doesn't nothing happens he gets four that's huge the pin already secures a kill it's down to a 4v4 we'll have to see what happens still trading evenly just like we've seen in fights so far but it might not be enough fortunately not the case it was pretty solid 80 percent left on the board can they make it we only have yet to see how this goes down for them they got to be careful milk kill could easily hook them and get the 3-0 now, King of the Hill would not be the end-all be-all if they lose this, but they have to keep in mind it's still winnable. Just because they lost their Ana does not mean they're out. Wesley goes a little bit deep with his charge. So they're probably going to collapse on him. This could give the rest of the Honey Badgers time to collapse onto the Banana Dance backline. And they actually oh! managed to cap the point. What an incredible bait from Wesley. It might not have been intentional, but it was an incredible play nonetheless. And at this point, Honey Badgers are actually winning the fight thanks to a little bit of bad positioning on Wesley's part. 
Uh, that's actually very, very impressive. They have to be careful though, Hunt, because uh, Banana Dance has a lot of ultimates to use. Unfortunately, Sal falls to the dragon and the rest of them get shattered. The Jeez, drops there right. to follow up, and it looks like the grab is unfortunately not going to find anything. It was the last push, he had to use it. <laughs> no use not using it just to lose the game. It's not like you can bring it into the next map, you know? Yeah, absolutely. The Wick is about to go down, and I don't think there's actually much time to contest this part from this right now. It looks like Sal's gonna go down right away, and yeah, that's gonna be the 3 0 right there. Alright, so Banana Dance will take home Lee Jung Tower. Some great show of force from Banana Dance. They are proving they came here to win. They are not going to be bullied. They absolutely want what they came here for. Yeah, very solid stuff. Good target prioritization. It was very, very efficient, and like, especially with the long hold, they. Like, yeah, it was stall staggering just one all at a time, but they saved it for which ones they wanted. It came down ultimately when they were running the Divas, getting the D-Max, when there was also on Command Center, when they were running the map. Uh, they, they were taking the fight to spawn, but they were being very, very careful because they wanted to make sure that they earth-shattered the Zarya, so that way there was no points of grabs. Mm -hmm. And overall, this was just a very solid hold altogether. I think what really was just sort of the definitive thing for them was just the target prioritization because they uh they made sure to like get the main tanks out of the way first and then focused mm -hmm. on getting the DPSs because really in the long run or just the supports as well just who is ever in front because basically you're trying to work on them like a Russian doll starts with the tanks mm -hmm then to the supports, and then the DPSs. Because the DPSs can deal as much damage as they want, but they, if they have no healing, then they're really just squishy themselves. Exactly. You sort of want that domino effect. You don't want to be caught in those long team fights where you're just sort of hoping your DPS can frag out. You really want to pick a key target on the enemy team and take it out so the rest of them sort of collapse because of it. Anyways, it looks like we're going to be going to Dorado for the next game. A fast pick coming from the Honey Badgers. Looks like they know exactly what they're trying to do here. So... On Dorado, you tend to see a lot of dive-based team compositions. We may even see some Hammond come out here, depending on how comfortable the players feel. Uh, it looks like on the uh, defense, at least, we may end up seeing some Orisa Roadhog, although it could be a bit early in the pregame to tell. Uh, like I was saying before, dive is very popular on this first point, especially on offense, because it gives you a way to contest all the different high ground very, very quickly. You, know, you don't want to be playing a static comp and be forced to stand there when there's a Hanzo on the red building to the left of spawn and a Widow on the yellow building to the right of your spawn. And it's just it's not pretty if that ends up being the case. Uh, so it looks like um, on offense here we are going to see a dive composition. It looks like a traditional dive comp with Lucio Zenyatta, which I admit I have not seen played in a very long time. Uh, but it does make sense with the slightly less powerful healing available from Mercy since her most recent change. Uh, the, the raw healing that she brings to a team composition isn't always enough to make or break a team fight anymore. Whereas the utility of a speed boost and a uh, Discord Orb, can it's still just as powerful as ever. Uh, meanwhile, in defense, we are going to see the Arisa Roadhog composition. It's going to be a triple tank double sniper, actually. You may remember it was popular for a while in, I believe, Stage 4 of the Overwatch League, where the strategy would be to get your snipers on two varying lines of sight so they could both shoot down onto the same low ground. And that sort of forces the team that's getting shot at to pick a direction to block damage from. But of course, it's instant kills, so a single mistake means someone on your team is dead, and once you're a man down, it's too late. So on this team, on the defending side from the Honey Badgers, you definitely want to keep an eye on the snipers. On the offense, you want to make sure you're keeping track of the tanks to see if they can shut down those snipers. We'll have to see what happens here. Well, hopefully... Oh my god, Tommy right off the bat again. The flanker, though, so that's obviously not going to be overwhelmed. And oh my god, Pierce right now. Yeah, you want to pay attention to these snipers because they're making Dorado, making a Dorado don't even come near us, fam. As a great <laughs> hook is coming in right now, but it does miss it a little bit. Just a little oversight, but it does put the fear in the eyes of Mi Milkill. They're laying this payload push because they know that the choke is going to be a very good place to hold on defense. And already right off the bat, they're doing a great hook. And they get the D-Mech as well. That is the reward that they want. Tommy being able to follow up. That's going to be great. A lot of damage. There is an Axial popping in from the left side on defense spawn side. It's going to be a little bit risky. And they get the hook, but the bubble comes in and allows them to fall back. They're laying this payload. Payload are being very respectful. Bubble comes in and allows them to fall back. They're laying this payload. They're being very respectful. But unfortunately, that is the 
case with the Rissa Rodog, it's Rissa lacks, mo lacks mobility. So the moment you overwhelm him, it's going to be hard to come back from it. But Tommy and Pierce are definitely putting up a good fight, but Marvel's getting close to getting demacked. And there is a great pulse bomb from Pierce. Oh my gosh, they managed to take this point very convincingly. Now, very early on, when with those opening picks, it's very interesting. They actually set up that crossfire, just like I was talking about before, where they sent Tommy all the way around behind the attackers, and that's actually where all of Tommy's kills came from. But also, so far, the snipers on the Honey Badgers are already proven they are a force to be reckoned with. You cannot leave these DPS players unattended. If someone is not actively attacking them, they will kill your backline. And I think that if the banana, banana Dance is going to be on top of that, but they might not be on top of it quite yet. Milk is trying his best to keep Tommy from taking two shots, but it, he's gonna have to back up eventually. Yeah, it's a lot of fallback that they have to do. They just gotta be respectful for the most part. This is a matter of who has the better etiquette, and I'm etiquette, I mean making sure Tiger prioritization works. Dropping the whole hog as well, eating the Matrix, just fair trades going out. It's gotta just be careful and see what they do about this kind of stuff because you need to just sort of bait out ults as much as you can in this case. And there's the Dragon Blade coming in. Are they able to stop Fuzzga? Dead in the track. Yes, they will. Tommy is able to stop this right now. Nicely done. Marble's able to get the follow-up kill. And the rest of the gang's just working on that supercharger. Wesley bringing the team home and bringing the hold in. Beautiful Supercharger, absolutely locked down the team fight, and with only one ultimate, that's the key point. If you look now, they are not that far behind in the ultimate economy, they're very close to a rocket barrage, and Sal's Valkyrie is attainable within the next team fight. They have to be very careful about the pulse bomb coming out from very close to some of his team, and Wesley won't be that difficult to stick, so Wesley might not be the target of a pulse bomb, but because of how they usually are setting up behind this small shield, it could still be really, really damaging. Axel's gonna start to push up here, pressure the high ground, I expect he'll have to drop back down. Pulse bomb is gonna whiff, and the self-destruct is coming out, we'll see if that gets anything. Ooh. Unfortunately, Quesadilla knocked out of his ultimate, that's unfortunate for them. Yeah, but very fortunate for the Honey Badgers as they are going to still try keeping this hold. They have so much in the time they, to deal with right now. And that's a great barrage from Pierce as well. They go down to Mirabra, but that's a double kill. The damage has already been done. Looking pretty solid here. And then honestly, in this hindsight, it is not the worst thing to do with a couple of dry pushes at the moment, which I think is what we're seeing right now, is that they're just trying to build up these ultimates because they have so much time the time bank to work with. You can see the Banana Dance, even though they recently committed some of their ultimates, they already have Transcendent, Self-Destruct, and Pulse Bomb all built up again. And they can now come into this next fight. That's a beautiful oh. stick on the Pierce 09. Knock the Farah out of the sky with a Pulse Bomb. That's so amazing. Now the dive comes through on the Sal. Tommy's not enough. And the tanks are probably just going to be left to fend for themselves on the low ground with no healing. Have they gone far enough? We'll see. There's the Self-Destruct happening. Not going to be the case. It is going to have Marble. Get D mech though, Milk Hill at least keeps that momentum, but somebody's gotta be pushing this payload. They gotta try it a little bit. There you go. They are gonna try to get it close, but I think we're gonna see one contest real quick, unless nobody's gonna touch it. Yes, they, they are touching not. it. They are touching it. Looks like it capped, but it actually is not. The time is not gonna month. They only have one point, and it looks like the Honey Badgers are actually winning this fight ever so slowly. That's such a last second contest. It literally thinks there are zero, zero meters left before the cart hits the checkpoint. But no, there is actually oh, wow. some space You're left that right. is now rolling back. That is like literally handing in your homework last minute in high school. Man, those were the days. But either way, we'll see what this brings us now with those last minute calls. It's pretty impressive. I guess it's paid out in the long run. Hopefully their education as well. We'll see how the push no. is going. <laughs> we gotta hold on. They dive. Cologne trying to get the pulse bomb out. Ooh, that's a good one. Does get the last nice pick on a mirror bright. The dive comes on to Tommy. They have to commit both tanks to it, and Tommy still gets out. Unfortunately, with no resources for the back line, the rest of the man is gonna fall. Yeah, they're doing a lot of stuff right now, and there is the SD tactical SD coming in from Millkill. And you know, this is a solid hold right now. They are just trying their best to just make sure to buy a lot of time what seemed like a very last minute push. I think honestly the hero switching over for Pierce Looks instead like of the double sniper and, and having one sniper to one flanking DPS really worked out. Now it looks like Banana Dance has swapped over to a GOATS composition. You got three tanks, three healers. I'm not sure I like that because Tommy has been absolutely breaking apart 
the back line of Banana Dance so far, so if they don't win this fight really, really decisively on the ground, Tommy is just going to take three shots for days. They are getting kills. They managed to land Wesley and Hippo Mage, but Tommy is still up, and he's the real threat in this fight. Tommy's going to the other high ground. Sal is chasing. If Tommy lands shots, this is still winnable for the Honey Badgers, but unfortunately, the shots are just wow. not there. Tommy's just not hitting the shots when he really needs to, so it looks like the point is going to be capped for Banana Dance. When in doubt, goats, right? When in doubt, goats. We'll definitely see how this works out in the long run for them, as they are just going to work with the ults that they have. A minute and 40 seconds left in the time bank. I respect this 100%. They are just going to be aggressive as they can, and it looks like it's working out great for them. Now you may notice that Cologne has actually picked up his grab only one fight after swapping to Zarya, which is some of the most impressive Zarya play I have ever seen. Looks like we are going to see the rally coming out here. They expect Honey Badgers to get very aggressive. The grab only manages to get one, but it might be enough to finish out the team fight. Not the most high value ultimate in the world. Pierce is going to flank around to the side. He wants to get them off the card. Unfortunately, the peel is there in the form of a pin from Axel. Wow. Shove him into the wall. Tell him how it is. <laughs> the bomb is out from Diva, but that's not going to get him to a well played show from Axel. The fight's still happening at the choke point. Honey Badgers can't seem to get out. Yeah, they are having a little bit of a rough time here. Wow, look at that damn it. Oh my gosh, Mirabrite getting a double kill with their orb, no less. Doesn't even matter about the cold lessons. This is pretty solid stuff. This is just like a pack of piranhas. Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of how you want to play these tank-heavy team compositions. Now, Pierce has no Wraith form, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough with just the raw damage. Hippo Mage is going to touch, and he's got a Valk to keep him up, but it's not enough to do that. And unfortunately, Sal has to... Sal sort of forced away from the cart, and the cap will come through. Freaking That goes. was some great play, though, from the defending team. <coughs> It's just unfortunate Tommy didn't manage to take out that Lucio or that Moira on second point. They absolutely could have taken it home, holding them in the streets phase of the game. Unfortunately, just didn't come to fruition. So swapping sides here, I'm very curious to see if the uh, defending team, Banana Dance, now also runs an Orisa Roadhog strategy. And it looks like Axel is going to lock in an Orisa, and Milk will lock in a uh, Roadhog, so that might be the case. Is the double sniper going to get run again, though? Double Sniper, I don't think so, honestly. I think both teams have learned their lessons from the side of Honey Badgers that you don't necessarily run the Double Sniper DPS. And here's the reason why. is because the Snipers, at the very beginning of the point, while you may, there's little to no high ground advantage, especially when mm -hmm. you run against the dive. And the thing is, is that the reason why you have that flanking DPS is to have your prominent DPS sniper to be able to work comfortably. If they're in a comfortable workspace, this is just in general with any hero or just anything in life, but if you're in a comfortable workspace, you're going to be able to work efficiently at your highest peak, and that's what they need to do. So, honestly, the fact that we might see that again would be very surprising. We are going to see the death ball coming in, the 3-2-1, uh, once again, and also the Mo it's going to be the Moira Zanyas, the supports, which are big things to pay attention for because they're trying to predict a lot of things. They're trying to be a Swiss Army knife big time. They're trying to predict the Pharah. The Moira has a lot of reach and allows folks to get a heal, the Radiant Healing as well. Uh, they're also trying to predict flanks, especially with Quesadilla. If you have a good charge ball Zenyatta that's able to react very quickly, then that's definitely good as well, especially with Milk Hill could actually come back and help, and especially with the splash damage, and then Cologne and Axial will be fine because they have a lot of power, especially if you charge up Zarya. So you want to pay attention to see how these tanks work out on the defense side, and you want to see if the Pharmacy is able to get any picks along with Hippo Mage flanking. Alright, so Hippo Mage, speaking of flanking, is going to be sort of poking around the background right now. He wants to go for a hack. You can see it. He's gonna uncloak. There's the hack. I couldn't tell who it was. On to Axel, and unfortunately Axel has picked a horrible time to drop down off of the high ground. That's gonna allow the Honey Badgers to surge forward a little bit, see what they can get. Marble actually managed to pick up Casey, and now we have to uh, Pierce on the Widowmaker up top. He's gonna be trying to take shots over the shield, but the halt is there, and Pierce is actually gonna die. Oh. A really great halt from Axel telling him, you cannot stand there. Wesley's moving around the side now. Gonna see if he can make any space for Tommy on the far, but Buzz God is there to make him sort of back up and think it through a little bit cleaner. Now the three tanks, Cologne actually gets hacked, but the shield is there. Fuzz God falls and with a with a lack of a damage threat, Wesley's gonna take the opportunity to move in now. The hook doesn't play anything. Tommy might be flying a little close to the ground, but he's got Sal to keep up. Wesley commits even further into the back line. Hippo Mage is there. Looks like he wants to go on to Quesadilla, who is now needing help, but he's not gonna get it. The Valkyrie comes out from Sal, and I think that will actually lock the fight down. 
as I say that, the Coalescence comes through. It could still go either way. Uh, Hippo Mage still in the back. He wants to try to hack Mirror Bright. That'll force the Coalescence out so it can interact with the grab. But the grab managed to get two, and that actually kills Wesley all on its own thanks to some help from Milk. And it looks like Honey Badger is going to go for the res. But now they're going to have to back up a little bit because they are lacking Pierce, which would normally be the bulk of their damage for a team fight. They're actually going to commit a little bit, but Supercharger should make them realize that this is not a great position to be in. Wesley and Sal are going to fall thanks to a nice, a well-placed dragon from uh, Fuzz God there. Yeah, very impressive stuff, especially with the fact that they, the, Tommy, the Pharaoh, was not really contested all that much. They kind of understood that if they stayed together as a group and they trusted their Moira to give some healing, they could do very, very well. And also the Discord orb shots, I think, were also a very big thing from Quesadilla as well. Because you could see that there was a very good level of communication going on here. So the point is that all, they also stand, understand during the pharmacy, what are the two crucial what are one of the two most crucial parts taking out the mercy because the pharaoh is only going to last for so long but you know a mercy could last forever and that's what they did and that's going to be great so now you want to see if they are going to be careful about tommy they got the barrage and they're going to try to flank around so that's going to be a big prioritization for them Absolutely. Wesley's peeking around the left side. He wants to get on someone. He might have. There's the EMP. They're going to come up with the bomb. Let's see if oh that no. gets anything. It gets oh my God. That Absolutely so incredible combo. They actually probably did not need the barrage or the primal rage, but it is going to lock them in the team fight either way. They have to worry about some alt economy issues, though, I might notice. Yeah, they're going to have to endure a couple of dry pushes, but that definitely solidified it, and they really needed to be able to take that point very soon because there was a hold that was lasting for a long time. Sal going down is not going to help their case either way, but now that they have three and a half minutes to work with, they should be pretty much fine. They're going to try to bait up the Transcendence and the Coalescence. That's a big thing. The whole hog, they can be knocked back all they want. They got enough healing to go behind their backs. So as long as they're able to just sort of be able to bait those out and even some of the other alts they should be good to go they may even dare just try to group, stay as a group together to bait out even the grab hanzo strike as well mm, yes now if they can if they can get some of their backline to group together it'll be a really great way to bait the graviton into a defense matrix unfortunately the grab gets through and the dragons and coalescence are both there neither get eaten by the oh. uh, Defense Matrix, the Dead Eye has some follow-up, but it's still probably going to go to the way of Banana Dance unless Marble makes a really good play here. You know, as I say all this, Pierce is still hitting shots. Milk got down to half and he has no healing now with nothing to stop him. Pierce is just going to keep shooting people. Tommy's on top of Fuzz God and it looks like Banana Dance are going to be forced to back up. Banana Dance are forced to back up. They have to dig. Push, they need to get kills. Marble's just trying to stay alive from the coalescence, and it's gonna happen. He gets back into his mech, and the frags are coming through. He's gonna force the honey badgers to back up, reassess the milk cup down to half, and he has no healing now with nothing to stop him. Here's just gonna keep shooting people. Tommy's on top of Fuzz God, and it looks like Banana Dance are gonna be forced to back up. And as are forced to back up, they have to dance their way back. They gotta be careful, especially Pierce, which just left with the high ground advantage. And when you leave attack with the high ground advantage with nothing to contest, that in Dorado is so scary. It's gonna allow them to get information, take pot shots, and if you're a McCree, you can see it. A very good opening for Deadeye. Absolutely. So this is going to start off with a pick onto the McCree from Fuzz God. The res is there, and the Transcendence will also keep them up throughout the whole hog. The Deadeye comes in from Pierce. It's not going to find anything, but Axel's shield is very low. They need to get someone on Cologne who's on the high ground. Unfortunately, Pierce gets hooked and will instantly die. This is going to force the Honey Badgers to back up, reassess the situation, figure out what direction they want to push from, and hopefully Fuzz God doesn't manage to take anyone out as they're backing up. Evil Mage is going to get around the corner. He's going to peek from next one. Yes, he is. Tommy is up top, still just taking pot shots. Tommy is up top there, and they will have the information that they need. But there's Tommy switching over to the fair is going to be a good, no. Tommy just running the fair is going to be a good idea. Now you're going to see the flanking try to come around, but they have to honestly, essentially switching over these heroes at, at a very close time bank. It's a very high risk, high reward situation. They just need to make sure that they are able to bite a lot of alts and be able to flank around and get the reward. But Sal going down is not going to be good for any type of Farah flank. No, this is no matter what way you spin it, there is no way they can push this without Sal being a 
alive. They need that Valkyrie to ensure that the barrage gets into a good spot. And without it, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work that they need to go through. It's just weird. It's very 50 seconds all left on the clock. They need to bait out a lot of alts and also be able to drop theirs in the most efficient way. They drop the Valkyrie just to see if they can push through with what kind of mixture. But I think splitting up as a group is not really helping. They really need to just go 5-1 to one and just try to see if they can bait out the fight. There's the Diva Bomb coming in. That was a very awkward play. Ooh. Wesley is going to get on to Cologne in the back line with his Primal Rage, doesn't want him taking free shots. Now he just wants to cause some trouble here on the point and see if he can force Casey to his trance maybe. The frags are coming in from the DPS on the side of the Honey Badger with a great, a great barrage from Tommy. Unfortunately shut down by Cassidy's Cassidy's even greater transcendence. Axel is still up, but they are completely outnumbered, outpositioned, and they're getting outmaneuvered. The dragon is here, so I'm like, oh, do it, but he's not quite going to. It looks like they can get this capped into the point, but I have to be very careful not to let Cologne take free shots on them. The point is going to get capped. Point will get capped, and that is good on them. It was just pretty much, it was a very awkward situation, but they managed to push on through due to the fact that they had a plan. Their plan all, all along was very complicated, but it was baiting out alts and trying to drop their flanks, and sometimes, you know, it may not work out in the long run, and you may have to do a couple hero switches and change the plan a little bit, but they had a skeletal structure to that plan, and it worked out great. Managing to get the tanks out of the way, bite the ults, and then push on through. Now they have a minute left. They may not be able to reach it, but now this is a good moment to push on through. This is their do-or-die moment. You may notice that for the first time in a long time, the Honey Badgers actually have an alt advantage. They have their Transcendence, they're coming up on Valk, and they have positional advantage. They're controlling the high ground and all the space around where they want the cart to go. But unfortunately, Wesley's gonna get a little too aggressive with it. Might, might, might go for the res, but I don't see it happening. Dead Eye's there, unfortunately. Sal's gonna fall into it. Hippo Mage's Transcendence does not block Dead Eye damage, unfortunately. Marble is gonna commit onto the point. I think they've decided this is going to be their last push. So they need to get kills. Marble's just trying to stay alive from the coalescence, and it's gonna happen. He gets back into his mech, and the frags are coming through. Wesley should be back any second now. They need to keep Marble up. Pierce also needs some healing, so this is getting a little bit rough. The, the self-destruct is out, we'll see if it gets anyone, it's not going to. Leslie fragging out in the back line of Banana Dance. This could absolutely still get capped, it's just Milk left. Now Axel's here too, but Milk is demex, so it's still pretty much just one person, because Baby Demon isn't really a person. And now the cart is finally going to get pushed into the third point. <laughs> Wait, wanna rephrase that a little bit? Divas <laughs> are people, okay? We, we Listen. Not... Yeah? Listen, when you're yeah. playing Reinhardt, and you're mm -hmm. on the high ground, yeah. Or, or, and the diva knows Why? what they're doing enough to boop you off the high ground. That is, that's not a person. That's a monster. Here's the, here's the real question. <laughs> Why are you Reinhardt on high ground? That's my other. If you're McCree. Question. Well, you got a McCree. McCree wants high ground. He also wants yeah, a blue rectangle. The, really? As opposed to, like, I don't know, a shield from Marissa, where there's also the stun that makes it a little bit easier to get those kills and picks for McCree? Well, you know, fair enough. Yeah. You yeah, said. You know. The right, same right. concept applies. I guess, I guess sometimes... <laughs> no, I mean, let me rephrase it, let me rephrase. Good divas aren't okay. people. <laughs> I, I see, I understand now, alright. Fair enough, alright, well... Yeah. Uh, if, you hear, if you hear that, Fisher, uh, you're not a real person. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, discerning whether people are real or not, we must say that that fight was very real and a very scary moment for the Honey Badgers, but they did pull through and they managed to hold on to dear life and push on through. Why? Because they managed to target prioritization. Again, I cannot emphasize the importance of this enough. And the fact that they also managed to stagger the D.Va mech was so big because that was basically, like you said, not a real person, but like in the sense that they were able to just sort of have not a lot of firepower or contest to miss. Uh, contest this. So now, running the Death Bolt once again, or actually they're running Goats. No, they're running Death Bolt, but it is triple tank, double support. We gotta see if Fuzz God is able to live up to the hype and be able to get quite a lot of picks. There is some shield that they need to go through to pick off Squishies. So, I mean, you can see the DPS or Honey Badgers are trying to find angles. Marble sort of peeking above and Tommy up top to the side, but they gotta keep track of Fuzz God and Quesadilla as well. They're very big threats from Banana Dance. Uh, and it looks like it looks like Milk is gonna get DMAX, but Hippo Mage is low. He's gonna need a little support. Unfortunately, he's gonna fall. Damage is still being applied to the frontline Banana Dance. Tommy or um, Marble hitting shots up top as the Farah 
shuts down the Senyata really early on, which is great. He's not going to get a Transcendence for a while, Quesadilla. Now they're just trying to focus down Axel, and this is kind of cleanup. Wesley commits with a pin again. It's just clean up. They are going to cap the point. Mirabrite's trying to escape, but he might not be able to, depending on whether or not DPS can hit some shots at some extreme range here. Now, I would be very, very worried if I were the Honey Badgers about trying to cap this to completion using Reinhardt and Zarya. It might have worked first point, but here on second point, the Winston that you see on the minute is probably going to cause some problems. Probably going to cause some problems once Hippo Mage catches up with them, because the Zenyana ain't going to run away from that Tesla again, and they need those Discord orbs, because they don't they just need to make sure that they are able to have them come to them as opposed to them going to the opponent because this is a more close range combat kind of situation. The only person that really has any kind of like contest long range would be Tommy and they need to be careful. They're going to go for the grab dragon strike though. That's very interesting. They're using the transcendence here so that they can through the dragons to really follow up on the grab and as it turns out that was a really really good decision I'm not wow. sure the shatter was entirely necessary as flashy as it was because now they're gonna have very few ultimates to work with for the next push that said they are doing great for time and at this point only one ultimate is available for banana dance it's mirror brights coalescence this is going pretty well for the honey badgers the barrage is look? available for, for the honey badgers yeah Marble is on high ground. As long as the marble doesn't jump in right away, they could be able to flank surprise, and they actually already take the point. So, well, good job to them. Wow. This is going incredibly well for the Honey Badgers. They managed to get a nice stagger kill onto Axel. They're just moving forward now. They have to keep people on point, so they're a little tethered there. One of the problems with a less mobile comp is you can't really split yourself up quite as much as you might want to. They're going to go all the way up to this corner. They have to be really careful not to get collapsed on. They gotta make sure they don't sleep on Milk Hill, because that's going to be the ultimate zoning. The moment that the Diva Bomb can be dropped is going to be such an uphill battle for them. That is a massive pin and shatter off of Wesley makes all the space in the world for the grab to go through. That bomb is going to get two. Oh that my actually God. could be enough for Banana Dance to come back out and contest. One is going to get rezzed, but Pierce is still down. Even though he just used his grab, that's a lot of damage that's actually gone off the team. Tommy no, is going to put a dragon in the no door, way. and it looks like the Honey no Badgers are actually going to cap no this way. to completion. No Mirror Bright is there to touch. He's got the Coalescence up. It's not going to do anything thanks to the well-timed tra Transcendence oh Mage. There is one kill coming through, but the grab is also there. It could still go either way. This is incredible. Looks like I'm going to knock it off of the point. The pin comes through. Sal's still on point. The bubble Where is out. Balls. Tommy's just taking free shots. Plus God going round and round and circles there is no end to this fight oh my gosh this could still go either way axel charges onto the point but he just can't seem to hit buzz god he's still in full health he's now spamming voice lines to really tell him how it is the shatter gets axel but still not buzz god and just like no knocks my god. away no way and it looks like <laughs> It looks like the, the Hammond pick, the CC is going to displace them just enough for them to actually get them off the point right before they finish capping. <laughs> You're not a real person if you play Hammond in OT. <laughs> what do you want oh, me to say, no. Spark? Like, <laughs> they just went in circles and, like, knocked them out. That literally... That's knockback for you. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? It's like the, we we can say how why that was such an effective push is that they were very patient with their alts. Um, while they did uh, drop a lot of alts all at once, and they were kind of like stuck in an awkward situation. The fact is, is that that backup barrage really was helpful, and the fact that also Marble or uh, whoever was on. Honey Badger's sort of uh, Farah for flanking was very effective. I think that was Marble. And mm -hmm. no, it was Tommy. I'm sorry. And mm -hmm. that was very effective. And that was just like they made sure to have a plan B and C. And that's sort of kind of like one of the things that they need to do, especially in OT. There's kind of a there's kind of a sense where it's like, well, when we get off the point, we get off the point. So we may as well just try our best with like what we got. And there's kind of a mentality that you kind of wish you could carry with actual less pressured like situations like that but that was just simply adrenaline mm. now we're gonna see how goats work out uh they gotta be careful though tommy could just pierce through this 
They know they have an uphill battle here. They they are fully aware of the situation. You can see they were considering taking the Bastion just to catch the Honey Badgers off guard. Right now, looks like it's just going to be some poke, trying to make some openings for each other, uh, You know, seeing who can land some nice damage into the back line of the other team. Wesley wants to do a really aggressive hole right in the choke. He can get pushed back by Axel. He's trying to make an opening. The Ghost is finally starting the brawl right onto Wesley, taking him down immediately. Sal is going to float down, not going to go for the res. He probably could. Of, honestly, I don't think anybody noticed. Unfortunately, now the stun is there to really put an end to that shenanigans he might be trying to pull. And it looks like, with very little in their way, Banana Dance is going to cap the first point. Yeah, that's goats for you. Um, <laughs> basically, it's a lot of healing very with a lot little of charging. In their way. <laughs> yeah, the, one of their one of their things that they could have done. Marble was a little too close to the ground. I think maybe if they used fuel usage a little more wisely, it could have maybe try to get some great picks off of that but that was pretty much it but i think this is as far as they're gonna go because goats is now getting stopped and this is like maybe a coalescence could help but they need to make sure that they drop the coalescence now rip tires out here we'll see if it gets anybody it hasn't decided who to go for it's gonna take axel okay so that's something there's really nothing stopping wesley from going ham on the back line now except a lot of cc the transcendence is out they want this to be somewhat of a brawl apparently all the ultimates are getting used. Both teams are really making a push here. They want this to be the last fight of the game. Marvel is going to land a nice barrage. Even if it doesn't get any kills, it does a ton of damage. And it looks like the Honey Badgers are going to come out on top of this fight and the map. Yeah, that's going to be... I mean, that's how you just stomp a Goats like that. You take out a support. You take out a tank. Literally, if you take out any of the members apart from Mercy, mm. they are gone. Because All you need Mercy is that man advantage. Yeah, that's pretty much it. it is comes down to that because the moment you take out any of the supports apart from Mercy or just any of the tanks uh, in general, that is just kind of like like they're, they're just a house of cards that is ready to fall down at any point. Well, that was some very impressive Overwatch play. You could really see how they were adapting to each other. Lots of counter picks. Yeah, lots some of wrecking really ball, close huh? team fights and some wrecking ball. When in doubt, play wrecking ball apparently because it, it works. <laughs> That was that. That was oh. as as the technical term is uh, stupid. <laughs> technical term, very technical. Yes. Very, Anyways, very that very does technical. tie up the series so far. We have Banana Dance and Honey Badgers tied up at one. Did Banana one. Dance win Lee Jong? I thought um, Banana Honey Dance Badgers. took Lee Jong home fairly well. The yeah, uh, the individual fights were all <laughs> very very even and back and forth, but most of them Excuse went me. in favor of Banana Dance. So it looks like we are going to be locking in Hanamura for the next uh, for the next uh, map here. What do you think we'll see there? Uh, that's a great. I know question. I personally am a huge fan goats. of playing Reinhardt. <laughs> we're gonna see a lot of goats just mm. apparently there's a lot of goats in japan um oh is that a thing not. yeah that is a thing. <laughs> actually let me look that up right now let me see um procasters we know what we're talking are about are there goats in japan and we're about to find <laughs> out uh yeah there's a whole species of goat called the uh the saros the Japanese huh. zero or the Capricorn goats. Well, it's a Japanese goat. Every day. Yeah, it's a Japanese goat antelope and even toad. Uh, it's just a bunch of like cool scientific facts. But basically, long story short, so what we're saying is we're going to see goats as a charge because everybody hates the first point of Hanamura. <laughs> everybody doesn't care about that point. It's lovely. It's just a good sight. But it's like after that, you just like I don't care um, because <laughs> it's so hard to hold because. I've never seen – like, when was the last time you saw somebody actually hold this place? i got to be honest. I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody who wasn't, like, a random comp, like, like yeah. a team in comp for full hold Hanamura. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Uh, I, I think the Dallas Fuel full held first point Hanamura on, uh, on, on, in uh, Stage 2. I think they did it once. Well, um, that's, a, that's a fleeting memory for us. Uh, so <laughs> One time does not a strategy make. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It has to be consistent. Speaking of consistency, we're going to consistently see. Potentially, we will see the goats, but Fuzz God will teleporter uh, them to the high ground because goats oh, be jumping jumping off from uh, the building that's through the ch attack choke is like so good. It's just like currently in like a, a state of mind. Not a lot of people go for Anamura nowadays just because of this. Um, but the thing is, is that with that being said, when they do so. 
it is actually very effective because you get there's a higher percentage of pins going through choke from high ground than going through choke on mid and that mm. actually is a very interesting fact and on top of that there's also just the same composition again marble is going to be again a crucial person to watch out for because the junk rat is just you're trying to get through that reinhardt because the reinhardt if they go down quickly the rest of the goats is just gonna just spread apart and also on top of that there's a huge risk as well they need to make sure that works that if the if they do go the the symmetra route there's a little bit of delay that one of the supports won't be there but we'll see how it goes so it doesn't look like they're going to lock the Symmetra in. It looks like they discussed it, probably said a lot of the same things you did, and they've decided they're not going to go with it, but they are playing the Ghost, so they just want to rush in here. They want to take this brawl immediately. Axel's picking on Wesley. They're forcing him to step back. Oh, no! Tommy manages to fight Fuzz God in the back, and that's exactly what you don't want when you're playing Goats. A nice pin from Wesley really makes some space for his team to move forward, take some shots. Cologne is going to fall. Not very, not really anywhere near here a good grab ultimate percentage all the kills for pierce 09 right now beautiful fight beautiful fight indeed my goodness i think that's really exactly how you want to fight against a team that's running goats yeah that's exactly what you want to do they took that pick off buzz god got the dmech onto mill kill and that was pretty much all that was wrote now they're gonna push through and it's not gonna work out i really don't like how they why you do this oh rip tire dead oh, that's everybody is dead <laughs> Dead! Everybody all looks dead. like they are also gonna stagger Milk LL. Uh, oh my just god! Let they... him get back, kill him at the last second. That's that was the last Capricorn goat. They made him in stink. <laughs> that was just pretty much just they're such. All, a... They're all dead. They all died to a rip tire. This, it's just a local <laughs> local man drops bomb and goat farm. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Like the thing is, is, that this is the problem. <laughs> goes this to is China a, oh my god. It goes to Japan. Uh, <laughs> but like the thing is, is that like that's the problem though, is with goats. It's like if you lose it the first time, the alts aren't worth building for. You just switch to dive. That's plan B that you yeah, need Yeah, because to do. every time you butt your head against a team, if you're losing playing goats, you give them so many ults. Look at the ultimate percentage for Honey Badgers right now. It's a massive ult advantage. They absolutely could hold this for the rest of their game. Rest of the game, if they play it smart. The rest of their lives as well. That is a great dragon strike. Interestingly, the dragon did not seem to get too much, but it did a lot of damage. So it, looks it like spaced it out the cold force. It is gonna force the rest of Banana Dance back a little bit. Tommy is still taking free shots. When they're on goats, there's not really much they can do about Tommy on that Hanzo. That's right, because Tommy is well rested because Hanzo is from Japan and they are playing in their time zone. Um, realistically <laughs> though, the high ground advantage is ridiculous for defense, which is one of the reasons why you don't play goats. It's, it's just like, or you if you don't work the first time with goats, because the Hanzo is just going to be uncontested for the most part. Now they have dive, but it's a minute and 30 seconds left. While dive does charge very quickly, they got to be careful. Tommy, what the hell are you doing, man? Why do you do this? <laughs> Yeah, why is Tommy here? He could be doing more with these shots, dude. Yeah, owl, <laughs> come on. Owl, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, looks like right now they're just sort of waiting on the side of Banana Dance. They want to make sure they got everybody, and they want to make sure they are not just going to walk into Tommy's line of sight. The dive is going to come through onto the high ground. They want to make Tommy go away so they can finally move something through the choke point. Quesadilla is moving through, but he might get flanked by Junkrat. Marble behind it has the rip tire. If he uses it, it could be a lot, but Cologne's on top of it. Takes Marble down before he really manages to find any value. Hippo Mage also goes down. This is easily winnable for Banana Dance. Their main tank traded for Hippo Mage, and that's usually a good trade. The Transcendence comes through so they can follow up on the Dragons really, really easily without much sort of dying, and that is actually an amazing combo. Might just won them the fight pretty much on its own. It did definitely, especially with Hippo Mage on those Discord orbs, it's absolutely nuts. It's just popping off. Now Fuzz Guy's the only one with an ult, and uh, hopefully they can get Cologne to get a Pulse Bomb, but I think this is a do or die moment, so we're about to see Marvel just kill literally everybody. Oh yeah. It's time to kill more goats. Let's see. Well, I think they switched over the dive, so it's just local ma Australian man just oh, killed the entire bomb. zoo. Just somewhere. Just drops bomb yes. in Sacred <laughs> Village. It's the rip tire. It's gonna get Axel. Tommy gets res back up, and with no mercy on the side of Banana Dance, it's looking unlikely that they'll have the momentum they need to really clear this out. Tommy does fall, and the barrage is here. Unfortunately, the shield buys Plus enough for information to just take her right out of this guy. Quesadilla does die to Pierce, so at this point, it does look like there will be a relatively 
nice, clean, full hold from the Honey Badgers. I has, guess we were wrong, am I right? You know what, I was about to say, has there ever been a commentator's curse that didn't happen? Well, I mean... <laughs> no. That's, we just dictated. Give me <laughs> one time where a commentator has said something wouldn't happen, and then it actually didn't happen. <laughs> There's whole compilations on YouTube about that kind of stuff, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous on Smash Brothers. They'll go like, yeah, they're probably going to grab an up throw and then get the kill, and then, like, lo and behold, it's like that. Well, lo and behold, we saw um, Marble was such a star player for that, honestly. Did not show up a lot in the kill feed, but showed up big time when they needed to. Absolutely. The fact is, is that is the splash damage, the barrage, the range, and on top of that, the fast ult charging that really stomps goats and dive. And the thing yeah, is, is that while dive was a good idea to switch on over to, switching on over when you have 90, less than 90 seconds left is such a bad idea. You really just, when you're goading, just... Don't try to hold it. Just switch on no, over you, to something you else. You do it once. Right? Yeah, you do it once. If it, it worked, great. If it didn't, then, you know, that's okay. You're still a good team. Just switch <laughs> on over real quick and get those ults right away as quick as you can. Because Dive can be a great substitute for Goats or Slambulance, honestly. Slambulance is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, usually when you take the Brigitte, it adds even more sustain. Uh, and it can make it uh, a lot stronger against teams that are trying to run dive compositions. But if you're not really worrying about backline harassers, uh, a more sensitive backline in the form of a just Lucio Moira could totally still be viable. You know, if you really just want to focus the front line down, the shield break that a Roadhog brings to the table can really be useful. Yeah, I just... I, man, you know, goats are just not fun to just cast in general i just like as a play-by-play or color i just don't know what to say about it it's just like yeah you saw a ball of death and healing just walk right in and <laughs> a take a ball it. of death and healing but we're not going to see the, we're not going to see the goats per se we're going to see death ball it's one hero off but that flashbang might oh, we got be the goats on out. offense looks like they're going to be pushing in right now taking point control immediately nice done oh, yeah. axel makes Come him on, totally sorry, helpless long team that's all right. So now Banana Dance has to do something fast. They need to think about what they want to do. Oh my oh, god! Down. A tick has what already been done. Now they really need to stay on the point or this is going to go for Honey Badgers immediately. Some great play from Honey Badgers. Completely caught Axel out and just nothing Banana Dance could do. Once their main tank was gone, they just couldn't local, touch the point. Local herd of goats defile sacred Japanese shrine. <laughs> it's what you just saw there. <laughs> Well, as we saw, that the Capricorn Goat is a very efficient um, uh, type of composition, as uh, they are also a even-toed um, ungulimate mammal. It is found in dense woodland in Japan, primarily in northern and central Honshu. Uh, Seros are solitarily or gathering couples or small family groups, and we saw a small family group of guys <laughs> coming in here. Taking a new home for themselves, uh, as they're just so tired. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just, I have this mental image now of a herd of goats strutting into a Japanese city. They just sort of look around. Everybody, all the citizens are turning their heads, and they see this herd of goats, and they dr they drop their coffee and they run for the hills because they know what's coming <laughs> what a, yeah they're like oh no that's a lot of healing fam <laughs> we better ski daddle the goats are here <laughs> anyways it's a very solid win from the honey badgers that will put them up one in this setup in this matchup it is now 2-1 uh, and if i remember correctly i do believe then this could be game point now for the honey badgers it is uh, and so if the Honey Badgers manage to take home Eichenwald, which is apparently where we're going to, uh, this will be their semifinals. They will pro progress to the grand finals where will, they will take on the Squiggly Boys uh, for the cash prize. Um, and we will just have to see if that happens, I suppose. Some very interesting back and forth. I guess Hanamura just wasn't Banana Dance's map. Uh, map. If you ask me, they didn't look very well practiced on it. Uh, it's probably not one they played in scrims very much. Um, because I know for a fact these are all teams that have been scrimming. Uh, these these That's are right. the teams that have decided to take this as seriously as possible, and speaking, they really want to win. Speaking of taking it seriously real quick, let's give a little bit of a shout-out to our producer, Ben Viglo. Uh, he's oh, absolutely. He's been doing a great job producing and making sure that we are not casting and producing at the same time, which is a, a big old no-no. 
Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so we tried. Thanks, Some of the Ben. Earlier games, we tried. Hey, thank we you, we, we get we get used to it. So thank you, Ben. We love you very much, and uh, keep keep being awesome, buddy. Yeah, keep uh, up the good work, my dude. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so we're uh, we're here in uh, <laughs> we're here in good old Eichen Eichenwald, and if we like uh would you like to know? Uh, we are probably going to do a uh, see maybe a, uh, a Zyga, which is also okay. German for a, a Zyga. Uh, which is a uh, a zyga is a uh, a German term for goats. Okay. And, um, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So uh, silly me. Shout out to Google Translate. Um, as the word, oh, but yes. we may we may not see that actually. We may actually see potentially maybe um double two 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 DPS Hanzo Graf Strike with the pharmacy as we see here. But on the defense side, I do like Hippo Mage going on the hack. The health packs are going to be overwhelmed. Um, because that's such a crucial, especially in uh, abandoned tower, where they have the, where it sort of splits the fork, the health pack. If it's uh, or not the health pack there, but the health pack that is in um, cl like right across from abandoned tower, that little hole that that sometimes comes out from defense side is very helpful for like attack. They usually sort of fall back there and take advantage of it, and not usually the house or the hunting house, if you will. So that might be able to work out. Uh, and they're not going for the treehouse composition as well, so they're just going to stick here and try to hold that choke. So that might be effective, but you want to see if Axel is able to push on through. Now, I noticed Pierce actually set his venom mine up on the that Fuzz God might consider uh, hovering over to get into the backline. Really smart place to put that early warning system. They really pick on the mirror bright. Doesn't matter too much. KCB is there with the res. Uh, looks like the banana dance is going to start pushing through the door. Axel's pushing out. We'll have to see what happens here. I'm sorry, that's just that pick on the Sombra was so good. All right, <laughs> that's a great pin right there, and they actually they almost knocked back Marble off the stage. That's really impressive. But basically, they just took that point, and I think <laughs> I think it's very impressive that Mirror Bright's able to come back from that. Um, the Discord wars were very crucial, but uh, I've imagined unfortunately just sort of taking the flanking back and just sort of leaving their team behind instead of hacking one of the health packs was. Kind of like one of the downfalls specifically. Yeah, it was but... a very relaxed push there, I noticed. Yeah, that was way too comfortable. Yeah, not that a lot was... of pressure being applied there from the, from the Honey Badgers. They're going to have to do a little better than that particular push. We've definitely yeah. seen much better, so we'll have to see what they do here in Streets. Anyways, yeah. looks like uh, Axel's going to start pushing forward a little bit. Marble just want to uh, drop down and tickle the shield a tiny bit. Piers managed to take out Milk. That's great, even if it's not going to last that long thanks to a nice res from Quesadilla. The charge is gone, so nice little bonus. Fuzz God getting pressured by Wesley. He might actually die. It doesn't look like it. Wesley tries to fall down. Hippo Mage goes in for the for the EMP and managed to take out Mirabrite instantly. Fuzz God's on the ground. Hippo Mage can take him out right now. Oh, he's got Barrage up, so taking him out would be nice. There's a nice shot from Pierce. Marble still just piling damage in from afar. Sal's got to get out of there. And, uh... Looks like they don't really want to commit any harder than that. They start to sold the cart for a little bit. Only used one ultimate. Still doing pretty well. Yeah, they're doing great right now. And especially the fact that they could even take the high ground advantage if they so desire. Because Cologne is just popping off right now. And once you once on attack you take the high ground advantage, you could be pretty comfortable. And I like this zoning coming in with the dragon strike. Yeah, it attempted to take out Sal on the Mercy as he flew back, but it wasn't aimed quite right. The mobility was there. Wesley managed to take out Fuzz God really early on. Tommy can be relatively uncontested now, but unfortunately Jeez. Cologne's going to take out Pierce, so that back just changed. Now, if they can manage to take Cologne out of the fight, not not by killing him, but just by preventing him from taking shots, Tommy can get into a very aggressive position and take some free shots. Transcendence is out, so is the Earth Shatter. It managed to take two, but the pin doesn't hit Hyper Hippo Mage. It only hits Marble, and both of them are getting pocketed. So it looks like no kills will come of it. Wesley is down, but it's only a 5v6. The self-destruct is there. It's not going to get anyone. Looks like Quesadilla is going to fall, though. Two nice shots from hit, uh, from Pierce 09 means that the fight will probably go in the Honey Badger's favor. Uh, it's just Fuzz God and Axel now. Should be clean up, but they do manage to demech uh, Marble. So that's a nice free ult charge for Axel before they uh, send him on his merry way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will. Sorry, just the knockback. Oh, Overwatch <coughs> ragdolls are the best, let me tell you. Uh, but they managed to hold on to that point very well. I think there was a little bit of overextending, unfortunately, and I think Cologne, if they actually came a little bit closer and did some close range fight, did a storm arrow, they would have been able to finish off that fight quite easily. Mm. Uh, especially with the fact that nobody got t picked off by Marvel's uh, Diva ult. But, you know, it's still not the end of the world. It's three minutes and five seconds. They're very close to the point. It is still very doable. 
Unfortunately, oh, Cologne's gonna get singled out by Wesley on the win on the Winston. The Primal Rage is there, so can get back to the rest of the fight really, really quickly. The grab comes through, and they're gonna combo with Barrage. Marble manages to eat enough to stay alive and give Pierce the time he needs to take the shots to win the fight. The res comes through, they got all six people up. Nice, clean fight from the Honey Badgers. Really nice win after the after Banana Dance committed both Graviton and Rocket Barrage. It is very impressive that they are able to still hold on to it and now that they went through a good chunk of their ults on the side of banana dance this is actually even though there's two minutes and 25 seconds left pierce with these pop-offs and he st still hasn't dropped the visor means that they can still have the information they can prolong this cologne getting the pick off though does show a little bit of sign of life but they have to be very careful oh unfortunately that dragon again meant to prevent some what? a little bit late he goes for quesadilla but he did get quesadilla uh, and that yeah. being the mercy, that is somewhat of a good trade because there's no res available now for the rest of Banana Dance. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're immediately going to move in. They still have a little bit of time. Uh, Wesley needs to get healed up first, but the Storm Arrows is there to prevent that from happening. I don't think Sal has res yet. They can commit their support ults if they still want to commit to the fight, but I wouldn't do it. They have the double sniper from Banana Dance. That can make it very dangerous. Pierce there with a kill onto Fuzz God, a well-placed shot. Unfortunately, then he's going to lose the duel with Cologne. Self-destruct comes through, gets Mirror Bright. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Zenyatta. It's just the Zenyatta. It's just like so bullied. And then also just the fact that it's just like, it's it almost feels like a solo all. The resources that are just sort of used here is just so ridiculously powerful. And it's like almost mm. to the point where they're just solo alting. But like the zoning's actually working out. So it's almost like it's been very much a Swiss army knife of alt. And also, fun fact, Cologne is actually a name of a city in Germany. Oh, well, I knew that. I knew that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Esports lover would, because of the USL1, <laughs> Cologne. <laughs> but, uh... Anyways, uh... Yeah. Still still watching a, an interesting alt economy here. We got a nice alt advantage for Banana Dance. Could be more, though. We're making some swaps. They now have a Genji. Plus God's on the Genji. And it uh, looks like he wants to go contest Tommy, but he's going to get booped back, so... It's an interesting choice to use the dragon from that far away. I guess they just don't want Pierce on that high ground as they move forward. What is this all? <laughs> uh, Axel's going to really commit to diving Pierce. Not going to be quite the right choice, but the Transcendence is there so they can see it through. Tommy goes for a very interestingly placed rocket barrage, but he's not really going to get anything. <laughs> and, uh, and it looks like... Banana Ants is managing to snag some kills as they go through here. They just need to take out the tank lineup. Pierce does manage to get res, so if Pierce can get one or two kills, this is absolutely a winnable fight. Unfortunately, Al's going to fall to the self-destruct. Support's just getting bullied by these ultimates. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How, did, how did he get... How did Milk Hill get, like, two to the Devolves <laughs> and, like, there's a space in between? Oh, let's not get off card, guys. Uh, oh, man. We'll see how this goes. I think, hopefully, Tommy is doing a good job, but Cologne's popping off. They got... <laughs> <laughs> what is up there? They oh, keep boy. aiming up. All right, the wick and is about to go Somehow, it looks like Honey Badgers have actually managed to get back onto the point. It's because get everybody kept back. shooting at ceiling, <laughs> <laughs> expecting to find the widow. <laughs> the widow's nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, and I want to know. There was just such a weird old economy, which is why I was having such a giggle fit. And just especially the fact that, like, the <coughs> diva bomb at the end, I don't know if anybody noticed that, but there was, like, two kills uh, after the diva bomb was, was dropped. Like, there was such a delay in, in like, the diva bomb getting the other Zenyatta. Mm. <laughs> um, so there was, like, it was, like, Mercy got a kill, then there was a Genji dash, and then the Zenyatta got killed by the Diva Bomb. But before all that, there was a Diva Bomb kill from the same Diva Bomb that got the Mercy. So it was like, <laughs> it was a weird delay. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> the Zenyatta, it's the, pro it's the problem of the positioning that is like going on for my head right now. It's just like, the thing is, is that the Zen they get so spaced out. And then on top of that, they're so far away from each other, and just the fact that, like, the Zenyatta didn't never caught the break. He just walked out the door and died from it all. And it's just like, that is just like, it's, you're, it's just a big mood. That's the Zenyatta like, life right there. That is the Zenyatta just, life. You're just like, all right, guys, is, let me eat this all real quick. I'll be back. Yeah, like exactly. Longer. It's really good. <laughs> but also on top of that, I will say on a serious note that, like, the all-place move is so whack. 
It was very yeah, big. It was odd. all over the place for both teams. It was. Say. It was like it was such a big map, and both of them were just like, I don't know. Maybe maybe if we shoot up, we'll find like a Pharah, a Mercy. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe if we maybe just a... press Q, something will happen. Yeah, you know, guys, guys, blame it. You know, if it doesn't work, just blame it, Fat Finger. Just say it's a Fat Finger, we'll be fine. But hopefully, everything will be. Oh, never mind. We're gonna see the Zyga. Okay, <laughs> Zyga coming out from. Uh... We got the, the goats slash Zyga coming out from the Honey Badger. He's like, whatever, on the right side, that's a little bit risky. With uh, Fuzz God there on the boot, doesn't look like he's going to take it. Oh, They're Fuzz gonna God. rush out here, see if they find anything. I'm not sure direct is quite the right way to go. It's a long way to go through spam. And Axel almost lands the pin, but not quite. Zal's just trying to get put some damage in. They're all trying to work on getting Axel out of the equation right now, and it is going to happen. Oh, they don't seem to realize. Oh, my God. Just on the side. Holy God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? I just saw what Sal. I, I I just saw Sal like, freaking just wall ride up the up the high ground that you go around right, and just punch melee kill, like enough for Hippo Mage to get the 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 reach. Oh wow! And just like it was like Lucio just punched Farah in the head, knocked her down, get the reach and <laughs> range for Hippo Mage. What is this game? I don't even know anymore. Lucy just like knocked Farah in the head, like get yeah, just down like there. just like dunked Doom her. Fist style. <laughs> All right, so again, we're in another poke phase here. Fuzz God's up top, trying to get some nice damage in. Might be getting a little too close though. They don't want to be able to hit him with any key abilities. Uh, Cologne's also up top. I'm not sure how Pierce actually got up there. I didn't notice that. Marble's really committing. He wants to get on Fuzz God. He manages to take him out. Uh, it's a it's a. <laughs> Nice use of abilities there. Now that they're down in DPS, it's going to be really difficult. Unfortunately, Mirror Bright seems to have accidentally fallen off the high ground. He's going to get, get get tossed around a little bit down there. So I'll try to go for the boop to get Axel off, but unfortunately, I miss. This is all over the place, i got to admit. Uh, Cologne's still taking shots from the high ground. We'll see if anything comes of it. He's going to dead eye. Everyone is really spread out. He manages to take Sal. That's a nice barrage as well for the follow-up. So it looks like they are finally going to knock Honey Badgers off the point. Four minutes left, but it's not too hard of an area to hold. What? They, that's a nice shatter. It's going to manage to take Axel away from his healers. And so <laughs> this could still uh, technically go for Honey Badgers, but with just Ryan and Moira, I doubt it. And Sal's come back, but probably nothing's going to happen there. As you, as you can see, Sal's just sort of backing up now. Yeah, that Sal was, gonna make it out of there alive? He actually yeah, might. That was spacing. That was straight up spacing. Just like the fact that every the, the attack team was so spread out. Like, it's just goats. You don't do that with goats. You either die together or you ride together. Whoa! Sal! Wow. <laughs> Sal. So if you didn't catch it, audience, Sal just went to... We wall rode across the map, got right up on top of Milk, and almost moved him off. Then when he turned around, he fell off himself. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. Oh! Looks like he's gonna swap over to the Mercy, anyways. So <laughs> I'm done casting. It's all right. People, people fall off the map all the time. It happens. Yeah. So, so sometimes tactically, sometimes for style. They, yeah, they're of course. Are, they are flexing on this team, and I don't know why because Banana Dance is that match boy. Actually, oh no, it's absolutely. Honey Badgers. Uh, it yes, honey it's, badger? a, it's a Honey Badgers that are at match point here. There's a yeah. grab here, but the Transcendence comes through. The, might get something oh. on the trick. They managed to take out Quesadilla. Um, unfortunately, both members of the tank lineup are down. Sal manages to take out Fuzz God. That actually could be the play that they needed, because that's a whole lot of damage that's no longer in play for, for Dance. Dance. Shatter. I think Sal may have just scored the, the game-winning kill. Yeah, Valkyrie with, coming into with play. His, uh, Don't doubt that mercy. mercy Blaster. They they held left as long as they could, Spark, and they did it great. He's going to Kobe the Barrage, unfortunately. He's going to Kobe the, the Graviton, unfortunately. The barrage. Shut down immediately by Tommy with a nice place, a well-placed rocket. This is down into a point brawl. This is going to come down to mechanics. Cologne with the Deadeye. It's going to get Wesley. The Transcendence is also out. He's just trying to keep his team up. This could go either way. This is the game-winning point for Honey Badgers. If Banana Dance loses this, they are out. And it looks like it's just all on Milk right now. He just needs to stay alive long enough for someone to get back. But I don't think it's going to happen. The Honey Badgers will go to the grand final. They will be playing against Squiggly Boys for the cash prize. They will. And, well, if you wanted me to be a little more in-depth, I guess we could talk a little bit about the fact that there is just the sheer amount of, like, 
what what entire nation was going on with these alts? The play of the game. Did you, did you see the look of the kill feed? Yes. <laughs> what happened with that? Why did Zenyatta walk <laughs> out and die? It's just he got the, like the last end of that ripple and just like just like I cannot handle the radiation and died. <laughs> and it's just like the sun killed him. He's this, defective. It's an omnic that sunburns. Yeah. Really, welcome, really easily. Welcome, welcome to, to I my can, life. Welcome to Eichenwald Becomes Human. <laughs> Eichenwald Become Human. Yeah. It's a, it's a good <laughs> game. It's a, it's a successor off of Detroit. But either way, good job to Banana Dance. Uh, they did their best. Uh, I think, honestly, Honey Badgers... Um, I think, honestly, Banana Dance just trying to style on them was so weird. Like, you saw so many alts just, like, misdirected into the sky. Mm. So yeah, was... I'm not entirely sure what happened on Eichenwald. On the other two maps that uh, Honey Badgers won, I think it was very clear that they adapted a lot more cleanly to Banana Dance than Banana Dance did to them. Because uh, if you remember, on Lee Jong Tower, it was a very close game, but Banana Dance was consistently coming out on top in almost every single team fight. Uh, and, and part of that had to do with target priority and uh, some mechanical plays from their team members. Um, unfortunately, uh, they could not continue to hold that up as the strategy evolved from the side of the Honey Badgers. And their, their DPS started getting shut down. They weren't able to take as many free shots. <clears throat> uh, anyways... So the Grand Finals will be playing uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time today. Uh, today. And so that is less than an hour from now. But yep. I do believe we are going to uh, take a short break and allow us casters to get a drink of water. And all of you guys watching patiently can take a bathroom break. And we'll yep. be back in about half an hour. Thank you all so much for watching. I cannot wait to see Honey Badgers vs. Squiggly Boys. I will we'll see be you then. We will be back for the Goat v. Goat Dittos. <laughs>